well, yesterday my painting was of a castle in Scotland. Today I'm staying a bit more a little local. This is a scene I came across in rural Bedfordshire just the other day. And uh, I, I like this. It's got two sweet little donkeys here all wrapped up still in their winter coats, in their waterproofs. So spring's not quite here yet. But there's some nice uh, shapes, some geometric shapes of this fence coming into the vanishing point here. Along the back I have another rail, post and rail. And the, the little donkeys are actually in a bit of a dip there. Um, their feet are just disappearing in that dip. So I've got to try and create this uh, undulation of this higher ground here, a little bit here, and the dark here and some old logs. Um, so you've got to do that by light and dark. So that's the challenge for me today, to try and get that right. Got trees here, lovely tree here with very well, no leaves at all on it, of course, because it's uh, still too early. But out to the right here is an avenue that goes up here. And these trees in the distance are a little bit muted in uh, greyed out because they're further away. And our post and rail here is dark, intense colour. So I've got to get that the right tone. And a little bit of light catching on the top of these rails fairly greyed sort of wintry sky there. Um, I'm trying to introduce a little bit of interest but basically I think I want to try and keep it light because I want to set off the trees, the skeletal nature of these trees set against that winter sky. So uh, let's have a go at that. And you'll, you'll notice that I've uh, sketched out uh, it's probably a little bit too light for you to see there very well. Um, but if I uh, very quickly wet it and lay in some of the main points, you'll soon see what I'm trying to do. And the other side of the um, that rail is a little bit of meadow, which will show and will be lighter a lighter green. So I've got to try and keep that a light. There's very little of it showing actually, but I need to uh, have a little pale, pale green in there just to give you some sense of distance. There's going to be a big tree here and a tree here, a tree in this area and our rail. So let's get in the uh, in the sky, get us a bit of a sky wash in. Um, I've got some remains from my painting yesterday. Um, a little bit of blue there, cerulean. I used to use ultramarine, but I'm going for the cerulean. It's a a little brighter blue. If I'm going to have a little bit, I'll try and. Uh, cheer us up with a bit brighter that that we see anyway that little bit just sweeping it down to my hedge line there and I'm going to lift out a little bit with my brush just to give us a little bit of interest a little bit of cloud interest which will show somewhat through our our trees so i've got my round wash brush here um so that allows me to it absorbs a lot of water as well as dispensing a lot of water when you're putting in a wash in 
right now I'm just damping it and it's a little lighter towards the horizon line so I've got to lift out a bit there and uh, let's try and lift there a little out right um, I think I'm going to put a little bit of darker just to represent a few clouds on the underside of some of the clouds that I can see there. So I'm going to leave that. Now I need, well that's drying, I'll let that dry before I put any trees in of course. But let's get some, a gentle wash of green into some of these little, lovely little paddock. That these little donkeys live in. They've got a stable off to the left, which you can't see. So these are very well looked after donkeys, I think. So I'm just getting in the, my first wash. try and largely go around my donkeys. I want to put some, they got some nice coats on. I'm going to try and pick that up. Um, it's a fairly bright green in places too. So I've got to represent the light and the dark so I can get some sense of uh, undulation there. Um, as I said there's the other side of this rail is lighter. It looks so light at the moment but if I put in darker darker greens so I'll mix up sap green. I think I'm going to put some of that in um, on these brighter areas so it will act as a contrast against the bits that I leave that are lighter. It's through that little railing there. You can see some here. Some here, a bit darker in places. Get that down. And under the donkeys, I'm gonna make it quite a bit darker. Because then I've got to try and create the illusion of a dip. So I have to take some um, sap green, a little bit of burnt umber to dull it down. Perhaps a little bit of ultramarine and that's quite a bit darker there. And that, I think we could go darker than that because it's going to dry a lot lighter. Um, so I've got to not be afraid to get a bit dark. Dark's under this tree here. And a little dip here in this hollow. But my main objective to get some dark in here. And in fact, right up here, I'm going to 
donkey's feet are actually obscured by this little depression there and under this tree quite a bit darker shadow there and foreground here was a dark bit to it Oh, my usual paper at the moment anyway it's Langton's rough so there's some texture in it which uh, allows me to get some of the uh, leaves and what have you just lying there um, Right, I think some a little bit of <clears throat> little brown in parts here we need to drop in well we can. Um, it's a little bit too ready there. That's more like it. get a bit of a brighter green I have some interest here so it's a little it's catching the sunlight here so it was certainly brighter I can keep a fair line a bit there Right, let's leave it like that. I can go over with some dry brush later, but I notice there's some some logs in the in the foreground, so I'm going to, and they're all sort of. Bit on the lighter tone, so I'll lift that out a bit, a little bit there, and we'll put some. I think I'll soften the edge of this there too. All right, let's leave it like that. The same green side of that rail um, quite nice greens in here this meadow <clears throat> um, right well I'm at it I think let's drop in in a foreground with I've got a fan brush here. I think I'm going to put some um, darker elements but it's a little bit wet. It's a little bit too red. Let's um, alter that a little bit. <clears throat> some darker brown and sort of debris I've got lying here.
just to get some variety. If you have a, a very flat piece with very little in it, just a one sweep of flat plain colour can be a little boring. Depends what you're representing, of course. This is a meadow or a paddock. It's got lots of leaf debris and various things. Right. <laughs> and under the on that hedge and this fence post and rail deal with that in a minute. Um now let's see is this dry? Yes, I think I can dries quite quickly and melt. I could put my tree in there. Let's um, um should I do that? It's still fairly brown actually. There's not much not a lot of green to it, but I think we'll just go with that. I'll put some of the trunks in later. It's just trying to get my little shape going there. Came out a little like that. Right, when we've put some darker uh, trunks and things in. There's another one off there, a little bit in the distance. And um, gee, I'm wondering whether I should, I could do a few here with this. Just across another meadow there. So I'll vary that, I'll put some different greens in a minute. This is just to give me a basic little tone. Showing a little bit there. So objects in the distance are less intense in colour, much less colour there. I just want to hint at them really. And we have an avenue here. Disappears a little in the distance. And we have quite a lot of greenery here. Or not greenery, it's all brown. M muted. I think we'll do it now and then just put in with a thicker paint and our rigger. Our small brushes later. Some, I'll try and get some of the shapes or suggest at them. Always trying to get a bit of variety. To avoid anything it's to the same -y. could try and vary your shapes a little bit and the colour. Right, let's it's a good idea to squint your eyes so I can see where the the darker elements are. I've got some coming this side and got a few very fine twigs and little branches come here I'll put um, the 
limbs and branches in the darker colours in a moment. Right, let's uh, get a smaller brush and tap in. This is number six round. I'm going to put in a little darker green to represent some of the other uh, trees and vegetation that are darker in in tone so again usual combination of blue and uh, you can drop some ochres in as well to change the color some yellow ochre there look drop it in there then a little bit of ultramarine to darken it up a little bluer and there were a few and while this is a little wet it diffuses well into the wet paper and you get this sort of muted some darks under there as well you can make use of this dark elements in that tree actually and we can drop them in while we're here and a good canopy in this tree nice shape so I'm going to try and keep that if I can um, there was a line of I have to join them up a little bit so it looks like a dark hedge definitely darker on the other side there in the distance a few there the other side of the rail. <clears throat> right. <coughs> I need to soften this this edge and this meadow area here I'll put a few darker bits here with the um, side of the brush oh that's better we've got some texture of the paper this length and rough um, it's a little bit brighter in here
sort of a bit of a yellowy green on the distance there. Um, so let's get a bit of cadmium yellow. Let's see if I can. Yes, it's below these rails. Yes, that'll do it. It's a bit lighter there, a bit yellowy. A little warmer colour. <clears throat> right. Okay, um, let's kind of put a bit of green there under the little donkeys there. Right, uh, I need to get again considerably darker in the in the foreground. It's a bit got to have this light and dark with watercolour. Sometimes you have to exaggerate it to help create the illusions. a bit darker. These donkeys are in a bit of a hollow. Come across like that, standing in it. And under there, I said I need to get our shadow in. It comes across like that. Right, let's leave it at that for the moment. I've got to deal with my log in a moment. Um, I'm wondering whether I should make my tree a little more muted, a little, a little bit darker, a little bit. It's looking a little bit too light. What I need. Yes, that's a bit better. Got a bit of raw sienna. Let's get this tree in. Um, <clears throat> I've got two big trees in this picture, so we'll get some browns and some umbers. Um, some balance. Um, this one in the foreground. quite dark so we'll have him down here and he came right down here that's 
that's it. And limbs coming off. Like this. You have several of those. Another one coming off of it. Probably darken up on these later. Um, got this one in the background here. Got to get these tonal values right, and this is just my first pass of it, really. Right, there we go. That's a little, a little bit there, and much darker on this side on the tree. It's not getting so much light. Oh, uh, need a darker colour there. set somewhat against the, the sky there. So silhouetted really. Coming in, bows. We'll do with some. better, uh, stronger leaves or uh, branches in a minute with a, a smaller rigor. Um, right, is that dark enough? Is that coming across? And here, quite a few dark limbs poking through. I'm going to do the railings later. Right. <clears throat> and there were some other trees here. Quite skinny ones. Lots of branches, many, many branches here. Try and represent them with a few wiggles. This is a number six round. Um, 
and uh, you get some quite a fine tip on this one actually. And this tree is further away, obviously, than this one on our foreground. So it's a much, a much lighter tone. Although still, we have a shaded side and a lighter side. So I've tried to uh, represent that. Um, we could. Uh, See if we've got a little variety in that tree there. <coughs> I think I need to a bit fatter here. Fairly substantial tree. Um, and now I should try and get our fences in. It's quite an elaborate arrangement of post and rail in this little paddock all the way around. But in this central area, I think it's around this tree actually. Just wanted to protect it. There we go. Donkeys at some point. Right, there we go. Oh, we've got some rail through the other side. See that? Right. Um, I think. And in the foreground. We've got uh, a fairly thick rails here. Um, right.
Right, and then got our fence posts coming. Trying to keep the uh, perspective. It's a bit darker under here with the weeds. Right. Um, Too. Right. Um, then we've we've got more railing to do. Um, even comes across in front of this one. Right up to here. <clears throat> we need to uh, raise these a little bit. Right. <clears throat> and then I've got to get fences along there. Uh, let's put one in there. These are just suggestions. You don't have to be absolutely on the correct with your fencing. But you try to get as reasonable as you can. It's our log here. Try and make something look a bit log-like. put some hard edges in it in a minute with a bit of dry brush perhaps um, right let me press on with that other head on the fence and that comes uh, where we start that here Let's 
that's it. And then we'll join them all up. Always a lot darker under a tree. It's not getting much light, so you can create more realism if you get dark under there. As the shadow is being uh, cast as well, of course. Um, trees in the distance so I've tried to vary those in the distance um, this tree we need to make sure it's anchored down and as I said shadow it there it is a bit of dark colour there. I don't think I've got quite enough dark in this area. Um, could put a bit of maybe suggest something. Lots of twigs and sort of general debris here um, back it on and uh, let's do the head of this little fella came okay, up to there and this one also in little tiny donkeys they were little fellows there as I said their feet were disappearing in this little dip actually so you don't actually see much of it uh, let's put the green coat in something hmm wasn't that a little bluey green perhaps yes that's a bit more like it that's it they had came right over his shoulder like that And over his rear end, keeping him warm, keeping the wind out. Um, um, this little chap had the same. Here we go. And I need to put a Slightly darker tone here, make it read a little better, and the underside 
this one. Um, yes, I think so. Let's put a different colour in the in our little donkey. He's got a little colour in his um body there. Yeah, that's better. white in there we don't need that wash that out with a little green and blend the edges on that um, I need to deal with their legs really um, and a little bit darker in his ears he yeah, had a little darker too Try and def define the shape a little better. Um, dark on his underbelly there. And maybe we can represent his legs a bit better like that. <clears throat> Actually, if I put a little white on his legs, sort of greyish, that might help him read a little better. Um, better right how does that look um, right I think I could use a little bit of yellow to warm it up a bit here. <clears throat> yes, there were a little bit of warmth coming through side there to help show that this is um, a little bit of a dip right well oh, that's now too bright I'm going to put a little bit.
bit of white. Try and pick up the uh, few highlights on the donkey's legs. I use sometimes I use gouache when I want a really bright, thick one. But I've got Chinese white here. Watercolor, just straight watercolor. So I'll make it as thick as I can. Just a little bit of water. Try and thicken it up. And I can give our donkey a few. Give him a white cheek. Uh, he's got a little bit on his forehead as well. Um, this chap is getting some light. Um, front of his legs, we'll do a bit there. And this donkey's hind legs. I'm catching some there. And here too. And there's a few white things at the base of this tree. <coughs> and I can with the uh, with this Chinese white, you can catch the the top of these rails. I'm getting a little bit of sunlight. So I just touch it in with this. And uh, this bottom one as well, getting a fair bit there. Um, right, bit of light on these. This the sun is coming from the left, so I'll put a few highlights on our tree, on our stump, um, and also on this old rotting wood. We could give and and this donkey in the front. We'll give him some thing to lighten up his his jacket that he's wearing. Right. Um, is there a light down in there? So I don't want you. Oh, under there. Look, I need to. Under these darks, under the uh, donkeys, let's put in a bit of shadow. So I'm going to get a sort of purpley, bluey colour. So I can, yes, and this little fella, his foot there. Some of thing of shadow. Yes. A little bit there. And it comes out here as well. Right. Soften the edges up a bit. Yes, under the, and I think I'll use it there. Yes, that's a bit better. A little bit of shadow there. And this is, can you use some of this slightly purpley color to give some texture to our tree there. Or meadow texture anyway. A 
little debris. Um, I think I'm just about done as much as we can do. Um, actually, I could put a bit of dark under to help create the form of that log under there. Look, a little shadow it's underneath. Look. Oh, I know I could put some um, that'll do it. Yeah, it's quite a nice little clump there. Just one. I'll say with slightly more vibrant colour I think I need to in the foreground make it interesting yes. <coughs> clumps of grass everywhere flicks <coughs> put a little darker in a bluey green at the base or in some of these daffodil things There still. Sometimes you have to go back and readdress the shadows because they, everything is relative to each other. So you lighten up in one area. You must sometimes adjust. Lots of shadow under here. Um, it's a little bit severe, but just rub a bit out. And uh, right, I think I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, so there's always the issue: uh, when do you, when have you had enough? When you've done enough? When you, when you struggle to see what else I can add? And uh, sometimes that's the time to leave it. But I just noticed. There are some um, bits of wire along here, so I wonder if I can catch them in with a few flicks there in between these. Yes, I think. Shouldn't do any more than that. Um, and we've got little highlights that you can add. But I mustn't overdo that. Um, Could put some uh, orangey leaves, perhaps. Actually, what I could do is use um, the splatter technique, which is you get yourself a fairly um, brush 
yes, a rather stiff brush like this, which I, is really used for oil painting. Um, then you mix up a colour that you feel might contribute to your splatter. And then you go like this. Um, give a little more. Um, I could do it with a somewhat intenser colour. few a little more texture right I'm gonna leave it at that so there you have two little donkeys in their paddock in uh, Bedfordshire and uh, they're not looking my way they're um, minding their own business I wonder what they're chattering about who knows softer edge on that shadow there we go right there we are that's the the end result is my review I like to look back and s review slightly or f briefly how, how have I done how I met my objectives um, I'm fairly satisfied with it obviously the more you do the the better you get as the uh, famous Gary Player said, the more he practices, the luckier he gets. And I think that's true with painting. you just got to keep doing it and see where you succeeded and where you failed. But uh, I've kept it fairly light, uh, which I want to do, and not too muddy. It's always a danger with watercolour. You fill around too much, you make it muddy. So I've tried to keep the colours clean. Anyway, I hope you liked it.